Don't judge a book by its cover. Now, a more suitable saying I could not find as Splatoon has to be one of my biggest surprise hits for 2015. The following is brought to you by Straight Games for all your new and used games and accessories. I took one look at Splatoon last year when it was announced at E3 and made my mind up. This game is going to be nothing more than a waste of space. A game that only kids and die-hard Nintendo fanboys looking for a reason to believe new life will be coming to the struggling Wii U would buy into. I saw this game and looked away simply because this game was just hard to look at. I'm just the kind of person who hates chaos, abhors clutter, and that's all I saw when I looked at this game. Weird looking creatures running amok with paint guns. But like I said, don't judge a book by its cover. This game definitely makes the grade. Let's talk story. I'll get this out of the way quickly as this is the least interesting and weakest part of the game. There's some guy named Cuttlefish who tells you after meeting him under some manhole cover or drain that some creature named the Great Zapfish has been kidnapped and you need to help out by getting him and some lesser Zapfish back. So yeah, the story is irrelevant trash, but this story mode, this single player campaign has allowed me to rekindle my interest in platformers. Because for someone who long left the genre behind, I'd have to give credit where credit is due. This is some fine platforming. With some seriously creative level design coupled with interesting enemy types and equally creative boss battles, this is one platformer I could not walk away from without completing. The campaign is made even more gripping with these smooth controls. Like I said earlier, when I saw previews of this game to say I had doubts would be an understatement. These doubts also extended to the controls, but these controls are as smooth as they come. Morphing from kid to squid is seamless as it should be, as this is an action you'll be needing to execute throughout the entire game, single player and PvP. Now, sometimes the camera gets a bit questionable, as is expected in a 3D platformer, but Nintendo did hold it together pretty well, nonetheless. You have the option to use gyroscopic controls through the use of the gamepad, but fortunately this is optional, as although I've heard many say it's the most intuitive choice, that kind of goes back to the whole mouse and keyboard versus controller debate. To each their own. I've even heard people speak highly of using the Wii Wiimote and nunchucks in first person shooters on the Wii U like Call of Duty, but I stick to what I'm best at so I turned off the gyroscopic controls and went old school. The story mode is an appreciated addition as I can see devs didn't race through it just to get to the PvP and it didn't seem like some tacked on glorified training session. This was a properly fleshed out single player experience that while not the most challenging platforming experience I've ever had, still put up a decent fight with some really creative challenges along the way. I was able to complete it in maybe a little under 6 hours. On to the multiplayer. Even after warming up to the campaign, even after completing it, I still was reluctant to visit the lobbies, but after a match or two I started to get the hang of it. In no time I was taking top spots and dominating match after match, even without leveling up too far. At first you're stuck with your basic weapon, a machine gun styled ink blaster, but it gets the job done. As you level up you'll unlock more weapons and outfits. The loadouts are a bit restricted, as you have to take your loadouts in packages, combos so to speak. You get a particular secondary weapon, with a grenade, with a particular primary, but it's the kind of thing you can adjust to eventually. Splatoon being the original one-of-a-kind game it is, you'll quickly realize that winning a PvP match isn't your standard affair. You don't dominate by killing the enemy, but covering the map with more ink. So at the end of the round, the team who covered the map with the most ink will be crowned winner. You can attack your enemy directly and it's still advised as it's obviously a good strategy to stop the opposing team from spreading their ink and it also gives you more points which goes towards your end score which will be used as currency in the shops. And trust me, you want to give all the weapons in the shop a go. Try them all on and see which one fits you best as there's an ink derivative for all the guns we've grown to know and love, from your shotguns, machine guns to your sniper rifles. The multiplayer is equally as enjoyable as a single player, if not better, as in multiplayer the replay value can be endless. So far the game modes are turf war and splat zone and we also have ranked and regular matches, but the thing about Splatoon is, and we could argue that Nintendo released an incomplete game, the game will continue to update and upgrade till August with a boatload of free DLC which includes new maps, new modes and weapons, so basically we have yet to see all that Splatoon has to offer. A few downsides of Splatoon. First, we have no voice chat. 
Now when I heard all the commotion regarding this prior to release, I didn't care much as one, like I said, I didn't like the game and I figured it was just a big confusing mess that wouldn't require teamwork and two, well, lots of games have voice chat, including the big dogs like Call of Duty and Battlefield, but many times online nobody talks and the ones who do talk say useless garbage, nothing strategy related. The people who really need voice chat in these instances are the esports players, but I find that Splatoon's PvP does call for some strategy. You could just run and gun and still get the job done. But if you can really communicate with a proper team. Say you have a sniper laying down covering fire while an OBJ player runs out with a shotgun paint roller and have two more dudes with machine guns giving suppressing fire, then in that instance voice chat would be ideal. But I guess there are ways around this whole no voice chat thing as we all know Skype and all the other free voice services out there. Then still on the not so good elements. We have these annoying unskippable cutscenes where these inklings go on about available stages and whatnot. They're not even speaking a real language, so it sounds as silly as Simlish, and you have to sit through it every single time you start up the game. And you can't seem to change your loadout while in the lobbies. You have to exit the lobby, then edit your loadout, and then go back in. The graphics aren't that great either. In most reviews for Wii U games, it seems like mentioning the Wii U's last gen graphics are tabooed, but not for me. I'll continue to call Nintendo out on this as it didn't have to go down this way. But yeah, the graphics are the expected Wii U standard, but one of the main reasons I'm even pointing it out is because I've seen better on the Wii U. But whatever, I won't dwell on that. The graphics are nice, but just that, some nice Wii U graphics. So what we have here is an incredibly fun game that delivered on all its promises. A game that not only surprised me with its high fun factor, but in a time where I would swear there was no such thing as an original idea anymore, Nintendo presents me with just that. An original idea done right. For all those who might be thinking Splatoon is just some childish piece of shovelware that deserved to be shelved with the rest of the kids games Nintendo dishes out like Mario Party and Yoshi's Woolly World, don't shortchange yourself like I almost did. Go pick up a copy of Splatoon for the Wii U at Straight Games today. The lab gives Splatoon a 9 out of 10.